Took a few steps forward and bowed until their elbows, knees, and foreheads touched the floor. Then they got back up again and repeated this for five hours. Last Friday, a group of Korean Buddhist monks and students from Myanmar held what's known as Uchetuji, a form of peaceful protest on the streets of Seoul against the Myanmar military. The protest ended after delivering a statement to the UN Human Rights Office, which included condemning Myanmar's military for using violence against citizens and urging the UN to take immediate and appropriate measures. The local news was delivered to Myanmar as its citizens expressed gratitude for the show of unity in South Korea. Korean religious groups, including the Choge Order of Korean Buddhism, the Catholic Church, and the National Council of Churches in Korea, expressed solidarity with protesters in Myanmar. The movement has also spread among civic groups because what's currently happening in Myanmar resembles the struggles for democracy in South Korea about 40 years ago. Military seizing power in a coup, people sharing helmets and protective vests on the street, and innocent people being killed by the soldiers. These scenes brought back memories of Gwangju uprising in May 1980. An international student in Myanmar said some even parked their cars on the street and pretend as if they broke down so that they can hide the demonstrators in their cars or their homes. This is very similar to what was featured in South Korean film Taxi Driver, which was based on the true story of Gwangju Uprising. Myanmar is also the country that had provided $50,000 worth of rice to Korea during the Korean War 70 years ago. South Korean civic group said Korea still remembers that and is finally paying back. In response to the continued use of violence, South Korean government decided to restrict the export of military goods including tear gas, suspend bilateral defense exchanges, and reconsider official development assistance projects in Myanmar. This is the first time for the South Korean government to take such intensive measures against a foreign country in the name of human rights or democracy. A foreign ministry official said, as we take the value of human rights and democracy importantly, we have expressed our stance via statements multiple times and are now entering a phase of taking actual steps. However, the government will continue to carry out projects that are directly related to the livelihood of Myanmar citizens, such as anti-COVID-19 campaign. It will also allow Myanmarese in South Korea to extend their stays and refrain from ordering the deportation of those whose stay permits have expired until the situation in their home country stabilizes. Currently, there are about 25,000 to 30,000 Myanmarese living in the country. Meanwhile, recently in Korea, a former soldier who brutally suppressed protests during the Gwangju uprising apologized and asked for forgiveness to the bereaved family of the victim who died from his shooting. This is the first time that the assailant has apologized to the bereaved family, confessing that he shot and killed a certain person during the uprising. The assailant said he has been feeling guilty for more than 40 years. Hope this won't repeat in Myanmar.